What if the background you imagine is limiting your results? I'll show you how to break free from that and surprisingly, how merging everything in ways you think won't work can lead to creating an unexpected short movie clip. I'll be using my workflow here. I have explained all the tips and detailed notes to create this seamless workflow. Also, you can find the link in the description. So I'm going to bypass all the group nodes. I'll zoom in here. For the checkpoint node, I'm using the SDXL Proton Vision. So I'm using the resolution of 1218 by 832. I'll zoom out from here once again. Let's start with a text to image group. I'll zoom into the positive node. I'll right click, come down to paste. My prompt here will be a pumpkin scarecrow reading on a newspaper. So let's go ahead to cue from the first image to see what we get. All right, so this is not bad from the checkpoint model and the workflow. All the nodes have been connected, so the character's background is automatically removed. But since we want this to be consistent, I have a look and feel I want to use. So I'll move up here in the workflow. This is the IP adapter group. I'll right click here to make this active. I'll click the load image node, then select the pumpkin face I want to use. I have already generated this from a character sheet using flask, then I crop the face separately and the full body. Next, I'll right click here to open the mask editor. Paint over the face where we want to keep. Then click save to node. I'll move to the side, import the full body of the character, then repeat the process for the full body as well. Once done, click here and save to know. I'll zoom out from here. Let's see what we get from the workflow using the IP adapter. Okay, this is awesome. We can see the style is almost the same as the character reference. Since the reference sheet was created using Flask and we are using SDXL, besides a few differences, we can see the style remains mostly the same. So let's control the pose of the character. I'll move up here to the left in the workflow. This is the control net group. I'll right click here then make the group active. I'll move to the load image, then drop my reference pose here. Make sure to use the same resolution here as your latent image. I'm using the DW preprocessor here for open pose, then the union model SDXL by Sincere. For the second control net, use the same reference image. For the preprocessor here, I'm going with depth, and experiment with the N% and the strength to determine what could be best for you. Do the same for the open pose since we have two control nets in the workflow. So I'll zoom out of here. Let's see the control net influence from the workflow. I'll hit Q prompt. All right, this is lovely from the settings. We can see control net is doing good. So try this a few times to get the right pose from control net and the character reference from the IP adapter. Once again, I'll zoom out from here. Let's move down to the next group in the workflow. This is the background group. I'll make this active and then I'll paste a positive prompt here I want to see. I'll leave everything else at default. As easy as this, I go up here and then I queue prompt. All right, so we can see we have our background now. I really like this. I have updated the workflow to be a bit easier using a preview bridge node. So we don't have to copy to paste in the clip space. Instead, I'll use the mask editor, draw a position for the character, then save to node. This will allow to merge everything together so easily. Next, we go to the compositing group. So I'll also make this active. Then I'll kill prompt for us to see the results so far. All right, this is brilliant. Everything is coming together and I like how the look is turning out. We can see the IP adapter control net and now the background are all working together seamlessly. The next group we have here is the color adjustment group. This will blend everything using a color match node. I'll drag and drop an image you want to use here. Everything is connected. Once again, see my previous video for a full explanation, then hit the Q prompt to see the results. All right, this appears better integrated with a little color change. You can experiment to change the method here and the strength here to give you different results, depending on what you are going for. But I'll still go ahead to keep the first color blend we had to make this image more appealing. Next in the workflow, all of this goes into the ultimate SD upscaler and a high-res fixed group to improve the details. 
You can choose from the final results which one you select. The ultimate SD app scaler will keep things minimal. However, the high res fix will usually generate additional things to modify the image. So use the denoising strength to control this. For now, I'll go for the ultimate SD app scaler. We can see the quality here and the details here are very, very impressive and this is looking much better. So let's take this final image, then we go ahead to produce a little video of the final result. I'll be using the platform here called Minimax. This is an interface for transforming images into AI videos. So I'll click here to import the final image we just generated. We need a prompt here, so I'll right click and paste the description of the motion I'd like to see. You can use ChatGPT here as I did to help you with a few prompt directions. Once your prompt is ready, come down here and then you click this button. You'll find your video under this tab once it's done. I've already generated this, so let's see this. I'll double click here on the video. We can see the quality is impressive from the platform and this is as simple as AI can get. You can download your video from here and save the file. Next, I'll use the Topaz video software to improve the video resolution. So I'll drag and drop the video file in here. I'll use the crop feature from Topaz to avoid the watermark, but I'll recommend a subscription if you are looking to do more using their video platform. Next, I'll check the enhancement tool here from Topaz. I'll change this to manual. I'll scroll down. Then I'll edit the default parameters in here. I'll scroll further down. I'll change the outputs to MP4, depending on the format you prefer. Click export as, then save the file name. Wait for the processing time to be done. I'll click here to find the video file. Using the Topaz video software, you can even take this way higher to a 4K resolution. I find this very valuable as a one-time standalone investment if you are definitely into AI. So I'll provide a safe link for Topaz in the description. The extent to which you can take this is unlimited, so I hope this technique may inspire some creativity and original ideas for you guys. As always, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this. Welcome on board and thank you to all the new subscribers. Watch this step-by-step -step video next on how to use basic nodes to create consistent characters in a variety of backgrounds. And I'll see you guys in the next video.